Firstly, I just want to apologize. As you can hear, my voice is extra sexy today, purely because I've got a bit of a, a cold or flu. Um, I think I might be dying, the doctor says. No, I'm not, but what does he know? As you'll see, I'm currently using Blender 2.8. Um, everything that I'm going to do in this tutorial, you can do inside of any version of Blender pretty much. So you don't have to worry about using Blender 2.7. You will be fine following along. But if you really do want to use Blender 2.8, just head over to blender.org, click on the download Blender 2.79 button, scroll down so you get to the bottom. It says go experimental, latest builds, click on it. And on the screen, just click on the Blender 2.8 link. It will give you a zip file that you just got to unpack and inside of that zip file you can launch Blender. But I do warn you it is extremely unstable. It crashes all the time. But that's fine. As long as you're not using it on some important project, you should be okay. Now, the main reason why I'm using Blender 2.8 so early before it's released is because I want everybody to be prepared and be able to follow along for when Blender 2.8 does come out. So it'll be less confusing for everyone. But not only that, Blender 2.8 is coming out sometime this year and I'm really excited. So I'm getting to know Blender 2.8 just a little bit better. Okay, so let's begin. So the first thing we're gonna do, because we're using Blender 2.8, I'm just gonna save. I'm gonna name it Curves. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click Shift A, go to Curves, add a Bezier curve. Uh, I like to just rotate it so it's standing up. And then we're gonna to go to the Curve Options in the Properties tab. Then we're going to scroll down, we're going to increase the depth so we get this sort of uh, geometric shape here. Uh, we want it to be rounded so we're going to increase the resolution. Generally uh, 6 should do the trick. And as you can see it's only half of a tube so you just got to scroll up, go to fill mode and make it full. Uh, now we want to get something a little bit more interesting. Uh, so we're going to press shift A. Add another Bezier curve, move it out the way. Uh, I also like to rotate this one to 90 degrees. And then we're going to select the, the tube again. Let's just name this stroke. And we'll name the other one Taper Object. We're then going to uh, select the stroke. And we're going to go down to where it says Geometry. Click on the box and add Taper Object. And as you can see, now it's got a bit of a taper. But you can also see it's quite jagged. So in order to make it look a little bit nicer, we're gonna increase the resolution at the top here under resolution preview U. You can also increase it here, but it'll only show up in the view when you render. So you can make it a lot higher. But I prefer to just keep it on zero, that way it matches whatever the preview is. So I can see exactly what's going on. Uh, I would say that depending on the length of your curve, you can increase this, but 60 is generally good enough. But we can make this a little bit more interesting. We can either adjust the, the depth here, but there's a better way to do this and a more interesting way to do it. We're gonna go Shift A, Add, Circle. We can move the circle out the way as well. Then we'll just name it Bevel Object. We're gonna select the stroke again. Underneath Bevel Object, we can select the circle or just select the circle here. And now we can control the bevel using the circle. We can also control the shape of the bevel. So if we press tab and go and then press A, so we select all the points, or we can press B and we can drag to select all the points. We can go to the curves menu, go to segments, subdivide. I like to select every second point and then just bring it inwards. So now, as you can see, our bevel has a very interesting shape. Uh, we can select everything yet again, go to curves, go to segments, 
subdivide. I'll then grab each of these end points and bring them inwards. Ah, check how pretty that looks. Ah, awesome, right? From here, we can then start messing with the stroke. Now this effect you can use to create uh, all kinds of different effects, like text or just general strokes and streaks flying around. So if you go into edit mode, you can select either of these points and you can press E to extrude. At this point, press E to extrude. You can also select all of the points or whichever points you want. If you select between two points and do this, it will create a point in between them. But I like to select all of them and then just say, subdivide now I've got all these awesome points to play with okay so once you've got a shape that you really like you can then animate however you feel fit so let's just select and what you'll notice is if you go down to the bevel options there's a bevel start and end now it will draw on and off when you play with this, this setting another thing you'll notice is that it gets kind of cut off and in order to fix that you just go to geometry and click on map taper so now depending on the length of what's left it'll actually change its shape okay so what we're going to do is animate the start and end we'll start with the end so the end is completely off we'll press i go to about 50 and have it animate on and then press i again while hovering over the option so check that it seems to draw on and so you can see it draws on we can make it a little bit more interesting. We'll go to about maybe 10, uh, hover over the start, um, hover over the bevel start and press I. So it'll create a keyframe. Go ahead to about frame 60 and, uh, and change the, the amount to one and then press I. So now it looks as though it's traveling along the curve and not just changing shape and size. So you can do something that either draws on or draws off, or you can make it look as though it's traveling along the curve. And then you can either use the dope sheet, or if you're using Blender 2.8, you can play with uh, the timing as much as you like. Another awesome thing we can do is say we don't like the way this is looking as far as how thick things are and thin things are. You can play with the bevel over here, or you can go to the taper curve, go into edit mode, and you can play around so it looks exactly the way you like so now I've got more of a teardrop shape to it hmm how beautiful another interesting thing is we can add some twist to this and the way we do that is by going to twist method minimum basically reduces the twist you can go to tangent, which gives you these really, really weird artifacts, but you can clean that up just by increasing the smooth. So as you can see, there's these awesome twists in it now. You could also go to Z up, which also gives you a bit of twist, but not as much as tangent does. And you can also adjust how much twist there is by playing with the, the curve a little, by getting a little bit more difference in how much it twists but that you can just experiment with and see what looks best for you okay so let's move on to lighting so what we're going to do is I'm just going to create a plane uh, stretch it out go into edit mode select just this back edge press E for extrude and scale it up. I'm then gonna select these two points, press Control B to create a bevel, and then I'm just gonna use the middle mouse button to scroll forward, and that will make it a, that'll increase the resolution of the bevel. So now I've got this nice infinity plane in the background. Uh, in Eevee, you'll notice it works very similar to Cycles. If you press Shift Z, it'll take you into uh, rendered mode. And because there's no lights, it is pretty much pitch black. I'm gonna to go to the environment lighting and just change it to, uh, say, use node, click on it, make it completely black. Or you can decrease the strength to zero, both work. Uh, the 
next step that I'm going to take is I'm going to press Shift A and I'm going to create an area layout. Uh, under the light settings, I'm just going to make this one blue, duplicate it, and I'll change the angle and make this one orange. This one, it's on all the shadows. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a camera. I'm going to increase their size so you can see what's going on. Uh, increase the size of this lamp as well. I just want to reduce how bright this is because it's a bit hectic. So I'll make that one five and make this one also five. And there we go. Also, again, I'm just going to fix things up as I see fit because some of the stuff I just don't like the way the curve is shaped. There we go. Ah, this one's still bothering me a little bit. There's a bit of a kink there. There we go, nice. So I'll choose an angle that best works for me. In fact, what I'll do is swing straight forward. What I'll do is I'll select the curve instead have it come towards me make it slightly larger as well so now it comes on swirls goes past the camera by the way I can't show you how to make those sound effects that just takes an overwhelming amount of genius and many years of practice uh, the next step is to go into the materials in blender 2.8 what I like to do is because they've already created certain layouts I just click on this little plus sign at the top here, uh, I go to compositing and I just replace this top one with shader editor. Uh, select the object, go to shader, new shader and it will automatically give me a principled BSDF shader. Um, I'll reduce the roughness, increase the specular, I like to go to textures, noise and plug the noise into the normal map. Uh, not much is really happening. You can't really see what's going on. It looks like it's evenly uh, spaced over the whole thing. So what I want to do is I want to create like a uh, like a paintbrush effect. So it looks like paint strokes. And in order to do that, I just go to the curve settings. I go to texture space and I click on use UV for mapping. Now nothing's changed pretty much just because this little guy isn't using the UVs. Press Shift A, Vector, Mapping. I then press Shift A, Input, Texture Coordinates, and I plug in UV. Now you can see it's a little bit more stretched, but what we're going to do is we can increase how much it's stretching. Okay, yeah, it's a little bit glitchy, but we'll get used to it. Now, it's not showing it properly still. And the main reason is, is because we've got to convert this black and white into a normal. So the way we do that is we add a normal map. We just plug it in there. Now it goes completely black. And in order to fix that, all we've got to do is click on this tangent space and make it object space. And there we go. Now that's a bit hectic, so we're just going to reduce the amount of bump by reducing the strength. Oop, still quite hectic. Uh, let's decrease this to, say, 5. So we've got thicker brush strokes. Ah, there we go. Now doesn't that look pretty darn cool? Now it's a little bit dark at the bottom, so I'm just going to duplicate uh, the orange light again. I'm going to bring it down. Gonna rotate it this way, bring it out this side, and I'm just gonna rotate it so it's facing there. There we go. And we can reduce it just a little bit. So now you can mess with the lighting all that you want. 
um, underneath it you've got all these shadow options uh, on the light that I actually have shadows turned on which is this one oops no it's not it's this one hmm I'm gonna just put on the contact shadows so you can see things a little bit better and there we go now I've got this awesome looking sort of brush stroke effect without really any problems boom check that how awesome right okay so uh this effect is is really flexible you can do almost anything with it and if you're using eevee uh, the rendering is incredibly fast and if you're not using eevee you can still use cycles um if we just change over to cycles there's not a huge difference you're just gonna have to tweak textures a little bit and uh tweak the lighting a bit because i find the cycles lights are a little bit darker so i just make them about 500 uh select the other one use node 500 uh area light uh, 300 uh, let's make it 200 another beautiful effect but again for now i'm trying to stick to using eevee just because it's so incredibly fast and it looks pretty good